Hi, this is Randy Randall of No Age and host of the podcast Hyphen It with Randy Randall. I want to welcome our newest sponsor of the show, DistroKid. DistroKid helps musicians get their music on all the major streaming platforms and artists keep 100% of their royalties. Hyphenate listeners get 30% off at distrokid.com backslash VIP backslash hyphenate. Again, that's distrokid.com backslash VIP backslash H-Y-P-H-E-N-A-T-E. Go get your music streaming everywhere now. Like last weekend, I did three shows for someone else, and the other weekend was like two more shows, and I'm just like, I'm not taking any money from this. I just like I'm doing it because I want to see it happen. What's happening? Thanks so much for tuning in to Hyphenate with me, Randy Randall. I am your host for the next hour, I don't know, hour and five minutes, something like that. Sounds very official. Today is August 8th. It's a Thursday. Friday's tomorrow. Weekend's coming. You know, August just bumping along. It's going to be September. Fall will happen. It will cool off. I have faith in this. I uh, just had to get the AC fixed on my car. I have a 14-year-old car, and the AC decided this was the summer. It was going to uh, say, I'm out of here. And so it was the, that question, had, you know, I'm sure you've been there or See some, you know, had something similar to this where it says, how much money can you spend on an old car before it just makes sense to buy a different car? And I couldn't quite figure it out. So I drove around with, with no AC on, <laughs> just in a hot, sweaty car for a few weeks while I just lamented this feeling. Like, Is it worth putting enough money in to fix this thing? And obviously the heat and the sweat and everything, it just felt like, oh yeah. All right, just bite the bullet, get the thing fixed versus try to get something new. I don't know. I couldn't, I couldn't quite make up my mind. I couldn't figure it out. I've been seeing these, like, I don't know if you, if you see these reels or maybe it's just me, you know, these algorithms just, uh, zone in on whatever you're doing. You know, I'm sure whatever you watch, they keep sending you more things that you watch to the end. And, uh, I keep getting these things for like, are you an adult with ADHD? Do you do this? Do you do that? Do you use your fingers to eat with? Or do you do, do you, or whatever? I don't know what, what the details are, but they always feel kind of random details. It's almost kind of like, uh, like, um, what is, what is that astrology or something? You know, if you just say something vague and big enough or something, you know, it's like, oh yeah, that's just like me. I do that all the time. I could totally relate to that thing. And it's like, is that just vague? Does everybody feel that way? So I was wondering, yeah, I feel like they've just been, it's been now creeped into my head enough to where I'm thinking like, do I, am I 40 years old or in my forties with just now deciding that I have ADHD? Like, I don't think that's true. But I don't know. I've never, I've never really talked to anybody specifically diagnosed with ADHD. But the way these videos sound, it definitely is one of those like, huh? Maybe it's just hitting me in that sweet spot of like, am I doing too much? Or is this maybe this is the the hyphenate dilemma? If anybody else is out there as a multi hyphenate and sees these same kind of reels on Instagram and goes, hmm, hmm, things that make you go hmm. Anyway, write in. Let me know. <laughs> hyphenate halftime at gmail .com. Let me know. Are you? Uh, an adult with ADHD or, you know, you can always uh, find me on Instagram as well. I'm up there on the Instagram at Randy S Randall and, uh, and leave a, leave a note on this page. Every, every show I put up a little tile, I put up a little thing. I think it's just been more fun interacting with social media, and Instagram, doing the, the podcast stuff and just promoting podcast things rather than showing pictures of food that I ate that day or random sticks I saw while walking the dog. It's also a thing too, like now, you know, being a dad, a lot of my pictures, I'd say 99% of the pictures on my phone are all of my kids. And then it does just become weird at some point or it just feels a little like, I don't know, manipulated or something. I'm like, I don't want to just keep posting pictures of my kids. You know, this is like a weird, this is a global marketing platform owned by giant corporations. And then I just feed it pictures of my children growing up. I don't know. I think I got a little... I got a little conspiracy or tin hat or, you know, tinfoil hat wearing kind of guy about, but I don't know, just putting pictures of your kids up all the time. I guess every once in a while or something fun, Christmas or something. I don't know. I can't quite figure it out. I don't really have a hard, fast rule with it, but I do know that I'm very stoked to have, um, 
the band Pocketful of Crumbs from San Francisco on the show today. This is a follow-up to uh, last week's show that I did with Golem from Columbus, Ohio. Um, I was I was getting interested finding new new bands out there in the world. If you are a new band, write me at hyphenate <laughs> halftime at gmail.com or find me on Instagram at Randy S. Randall and let me know you're a new band and I want to hear your music. I've just been kind of feeling that kind of the doldrums or I want to hear new things. I want to hear new bands. I want to hear new stuff going on. And, um, you know, I do, I definitely do not get to as many shows as I used to go to. I was talking with my older son, my 10 year old son. And I was like, I was at shows like five times a week. Like that was easy to do. Like it would see an early, sometimes you see two shows in one night or you'd see a show and then go see your friend's DJ or go to a party after it. Just what happens. That was life. That was life. Or you'd go to a show and you'd see six bands on a bill and you're like, wow, these guys are all great. And then, um, but I just say, yeah, I think I, I get itchy for not finding new music that, I, that I'm stoked on as much. So, uh, I've been digging in to finding newer bands and it's, you know, I wanted to talk to them on the pod. It seemed like it was fun to kind of interact with a band that way. Um, so yeah, last week was Golem from Columbus. And now on this week's episode, it's pocket full of crumbs from San Francisco. And I didn't mean to put them back to back like this, but it just so happened that both bands are touring, uh, on the East coast right around now. So it'd make more sense for me to put these episodes out now and help, um, get some support and, uh, drum up some audience for their East coast tour. So pocket full of crumbs, awesome three piece band, San Francisco, and they're going to be on the East coast starting tomorrow. Uh, August 9th in Brooklyn, New York. They're playing at the Living Gallery. And then the next day, they're driving from Brooklyn to uh, Providence, Rhode Island for a house show. And then uh, you can go find all this too on their um, on their Instagram, which is, which is what I'll tell you what it is right now. It is pocket dot full dot of dot crumbs if you just look up pocket full of crumbs you can find them they're easily googleable they also have a great band camp page has a lot of good music on there uh okay so getting back to the tour uh tomorrow august 9th brooklyn uh the day after that uh saturday august 10th providence rhode island and then sunday uh, August 11th new haven connecticut another awesome house show if you live in new haven go hit up this house show Check out Pocket Full of Crumbs. Monday, 812 Montreal at Le Saturne. I've not been there. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correct. It sounds French. Uh, so that's uh, Monday, 812 Montreal. Tuesday, 813 Kingston, New York. Uh, 814. Now that's a Wednesday, Philadelphia at Abysnia. Like the Abyss and then Ina. Abysnia. That sounds good. Um, then 815 Baltimore at the compound, then 816 back to Brooklyn at Gold Sounds. So you got a week to go see him. Brooklyn, if you didn't, if you can't see him tomorrow, if you already got plans, which I know things happen like that on Fridays, people have plans, go see him the next week, 816. They'll be back at Gold Sounds. You got Philly, Baltimore, Kingston, New Haven, Montreal, Providence, all over those places. If you live in any of those towns and want to go hear good new music, Go hear Pocket Full of Crumbs live in your ear. But right now, we'll get to my interview with them. Thank you to the band for taking time out of their busy schedule of throwing shows, writing awesome songs, playing shows, supporting a cool, independent, um, you know, all-inclusive, all-ages scene up in San Francisco. Way to go, Pocket Full of Crumbs. Y'all are killing it. Pocket full of crumbs. Welcome to Hyphenate. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to, to jump on the mic. Thanks thank for you. Having yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank you for having you. us. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. We have uh, Mark uh, and Sienna and Liv. I'm, I'm I'm thinking Mark is guitar and vocals. Hi. Uh, yeah. Sienna <laughs> is drums. Drums, vocals. Drums, vocals. A little bit. Awesome. And Liv is on bass. Yes, and, and a little bit of vocals. And a little bit of vocals. Awesome. Rad. Well, you guys are awesome. I was uh, I was sent your record and I really, really dug it. I thought it was thought it was really fun and and cool. I thought you guys were a great band. And so Thank I wanted so I wanted much. to talk to you. Yeah, I was Thank stoked you. stoked to hear it. So um tell me a little bit about the band. Like how did it get started? Oh man. Uh I don't know. I, I started this I think around like twenty 
18, just like writing music, like in my room. Mm -hmm. It was like a solo project. And then I moved to San Francisco, I think in like 2019, ran into Sienna and kind of just started like talking about music. And then we just started started kind of like writing together. And then I don't know, slowly progressed, started playing more shows, like more house shows and then introduced Lyft. We had like different members throughout, like it was always like rotating members, but yeah, I don't know. just moved to the city and just made some friends and always wanted to like start a band because I never really had that back home. Where, so, where, where is back home? Where are you coming Marietta. From? Where is that? Um, that's like in the Inland Empire. Oh, okay. Well, right. Well, it's funny. That's what I was thinking of. That's what there's like uh, hot springs or like some mm-hmm. kind of places Marietta like hot that. Springs. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I know that. Yeah. I'm, I'm, from, I'm from Southern California. I remember my mom would go to Marietta Hot Springs in the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very small town, quiet. And I, especially like for me, like writing music, there wasn't like, I, f- I feel like people like kind of trying to do the same things I was doing. So that's kind of why I felt like moving to the city. My sister was already up here. So okay, kind of was a good end. Cool. Okay. So family yeah. members up there and then, yeah. How, how did you find it? Uh, immigrating or, you know, not immigrating, I guess, but migrating up, up to San Francisco. It's a big change from Murrieta, right? Yeah. Um, I just got bored. <laughs> <laughs> I just got bored and, uh, went to try something new. It's super small and suburban. You're in New York for like a second. I was in New York for like maybe like five months. I tried that out. It's too big of a city for me. <laughs> so San Francisco is <laughs> yeah, sort of I in between. Scared. In between the desert yeah, and yeah. New York, San Francisco works. And then are you in San Francisco proper? What's it like there? Or where are you at in, in the Bay Area? Uh, I'm in the outer sunset. So it's just like right on the water. Whoa. It's quiet, cold, uh, foggy. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds, but it's really sounds like the dream. <laughs> Yeah. So, but yeah, um, they live here in the in like uh, no, you live like pretty close to me. You're like ten mm-hmm. minutes from me. I'm in the outer parts of the city. Cool. Well, yeah. Well, tell tell me about your journey. Where where do you originally come from, and how did you get to San Francisco playing music? Um, I'm from Southern California too. I'm from Orange County, and <laughs> I um I moved up here in 2018, and mainly for school, but um. Yeah, I definitely, like, always liked San Francisco, always intrigued me. And, um, yeah, I've just been playing music for a long time, but um, started playing with people here, like, in 2019 and have been in a few different projects. And um, I'm in a band with Sienna, another band with Sienna called Wife, and another band member from Wife was in Pocky as well. And um, so there was some cross over <laughs> with that. And then I joined Pocket in 2022 mm-hmm. um, to do a little tour with them to SoCal. And then it kind of just <laughs> continued from there. <laughs> Yeah, that's cool. And then you said you you went up there for school. What 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 school and what were you doing or are still doing? I went to uh, I went to USF. I did media studies and design. Um, but yeah, music has always been kind of my thing that I've been mainly focused on. I'm like um, I'm like originally a guitarist. That's like my main instrument that I've known. Um, and played for many years, but this band is interesting because it's the first band I played bass for, and so yeah, cool. I've really enjoyed that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, USF. I, I went. I toured there when I was looking for schools back in the day, and I remember the the one of the things that stuck out to me. Uh, Danny Glover was alumni there, the actor from yeah. Lethal Weapon. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, that yeah. still stays with me all these years later. I was like, Danny Glover <laughs> went in here. That's cool. I could go. I could go to school. Where Danny Glover went. I just kept kept thinking of Lethal Weapon. I'm getting too old for this <laughs> shit. Uh, but oh, that's awesome. Um, cool. So multi multi instrumentalist, do playing lots of things. Kind of joined for a tour and then just kept playing. And so sort of stayed yeah. in the group. Mm-hmm. We had too much fun. Yeah. <laughs> we had a blast. Awesome. And then, and what about you? Where where do you come from? Where do you hail from? And how does how do you find yourself in in pocket full of crumbs? So I grew up in LA, but I wasn't born there. I was born in Minneapolis, but pretty much like adolescence and 
North Hollywood in LA. And so I was super involved with the music scene down there growing up. The smell. Oh, yeah. I know yeah. that, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I've been there. Right there. Yeah. <laughs> and like, I used to book shows a lot down there when I was in high school. So I actually thought that I'd stay in Los Angeles to be a booker, DIY, whatever. Um, worked a little bit with like Panache. And then I was like, oh, I'm just going to move away. It's either stay or try that out or use like school as like an out, <laughs> out of LA, you know? So I, I kind of, I went to SF State, um, but I kind of more looked at it as like, oh, I've been to San Francisco on tours with my band in high school. And like, I met a lot of people that like were in their thirties or whatever. And they were like, you totally have to come here. Like San Francisco <laughs> State's the cool school and like you meet a lot of musicians and stuff. But um, I toured up here with my band, Sabrina's Not in This Chat. And then turns out Mark knew my band. <laughs> Growing up. Yeah. <laughs> so we met at a house show in 2019 because me and my friend Lucky here were throwing a lot of house shows out in the Outer Sunset. And we were just talking in someone's room, and they were like, I need a drummer for this Halloween show. And I was like, yeah, I didn't know you knew who I was. <laughs> I didn't know until you, <laughs> yeah. I asked you what band you were in. You are like, oh, yeah, I'm in this band, Cole Sabrina's on this show. <laughs> and I tried so hard not fangirling. <laughs> I was just like, no, no way, oh my God. Play it cool, play it cool. <laughs> yeah. So funny. So I, I played music a while, but it was really hard to, like, get your foot in the door in the San Francisco music scene a little bit. I don't know if it's changed now as much, but to find the right people definitely takes a while. And, um, yeah, I met Liv also at those house shows through our friend Lucky. <clears throat> and we started playing in Wife together in 2021. Yeah. And I also played drums in that band and Liv plays guitar. So we've we've spent our time balancing <laughs> both of those, and we were in another project called Bio together. So it's it's, it's fun. It's definitely fun up here in the Bay Area. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. And I'm trying. Um, that's cool. So with the the stuff when you were when you were booking shows at the Smell, were you still in high school or just out of high school doing that? I was not in high school. I started booking stuff when I was like 15. Um, a lot of like. I don't even know how I was doing now, but <laughs> it's like warehouses and um, house shows and uh, everyone's just super supportive when I was growing up there and there was a huge youth scene, um, which I think has grown a lot in the Bay Area since COVID and um, I definitely see a lot of people doing stuff here now, but I felt like I was very lucky growing up in Los Angeles because there was the smell, which is like kind of like the Gilman here, but um, you definitely get a, a lot more exposure to to bands um, at these all ages spaces and like different kinds of people because all the shows were like five bucks. Mm -hmm. And so it's just like, oh yeah, you need a lot of bands. I, I still keep in touch with a lot of those people now. So when they tour up to LA, I book them here. I mean, when they tour up to San Francisco, but yeah, it, I've been booking stuff for a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. And then and then multiple bands as, as well. That's Yeah. You're always busy. <laughs> <laughs> always booked. Yeah, always booked up. That's it's great. <laughs> that's so cool. I'm trying to think did, did we ever cross paths in LA or at the Smell? I feel like at some point No Age got super busy and we were just kind of out yeah. on the road all the time and it wasn't we'd always Jim would hit us up to play shows or if there was like benefits or things to do I think we'd play those yeah, yeah. did you play like the one of the anniversary shows I feel like we played almost every anniversary show yeah so I, was, I, was, I was definitely on one of them but it was like super packed oh okay yeah but yeah No Age is definitely What's popular popular <laughs> down there <laughs> that's why i'm so stoked to get your email it's like yeah okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh cool it's so funny i mean feel like you know everybody's everybody's stories you know obviously so personal to, to themselves and it's you know it's funny it's the smell was definitely a, you know a place near and dear to my heart you know when i was when i was growing up and 
and I think what, you know, once any attention was coming to no age, I was like, Oh, I want to make sure I, you know, I, I try to give all of our friends bands and, you know, where we're coming from some sort of attention too. If we had an opportunity, you know, it was one of those things you never know what, what people mm-hmm. give a shit about, mm-hmm. but it was like, if you're paying attention to us, like make sure you pay attention to all these other great bands in this great venue too. Cause that's gonna, yeah. that's, that'll be more, it was more exciting for me than you know, to be able to talk up my friends and everything else to do. Yeah. Rather than just say, like, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm cool. I'm pretty cool. I know. It's like, but what if this, what if this actually, <laughs> made a difference and and my you know and friends and homies could all everybody else would get an opportunity to to do something more with music rather than just us going yeah we came out of nowhere or these mysterious lone rangers so that was always it just felt it just felt like an awesome opportunity to do that and um but then yeah as as years go on it definitely felt like oh wait i i don't even know what's going on you know like going on a tour for like two months and you come back like who are all these people to smell i don't even know any of these people anymore which i think is right which is great (laughs) you know it it really was one of those things i was like you know i'm so thankful every day that the gym runs it and um keeps it keeps you know keeps shows keeps the doors open the lights on and it's not Mm -hmm. really you know it was the kind of thing too i was like this is cool there's there should be especially in all ages spaces i'm sure you guys have seen this in, in all different scenes but it changes about every you know two weeks to six months there's a new kind of generation oh, it's like yeah. micro generations of, of of bands and you know people they're like this is the bit this is the best band and they go oh, well they broke up but they formed six other bands <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, this is how yeah. this goes yeah, yeah. i love i love the like the one-off bands i remember that was always a fun thing where it's like we're just gonna start a band <laughs> just for tonight or like i'm helping my friend book this show and there's we need one more band i think i'm just gonna start a band and like write 10 songs <laughs> oh yeah for this. is that still a thing have you guys done that before we, I feel like I've yeah, seen that so many times. We've like done a couple shows um, in our scene that are called the debut show, mm-hmm. and so specifically, you have like three weeks to start a band, and you like submit your band to this thing, and like we've gotten so many submissions before. It's been like, okay, we're gonna have like thirteen bands on this lineup. Yes. Everybody gets like a fifteen minute set or whatever. So I was in a band called the Washcloths at the last <laughs> show. <laughs> And it was like me and Lucky and then my other housemate. And then, yeah, we had a band called Gleeker. Yeah. That was like a 12 piece. Like, it started out just like, we're going to do this one time. And then people were like, yeah, I like this. And we had like four shows. And like, okay, this was not meant to last. It was very specific for that time. It was like, Gleeker moment. Yeah. So it does happen. It's mm-hmm. fun. It's really fun. That's great. Yeah. I'm trying to, we had, we had one band, I forget, I feel like it was like for like a Halloween show or something, but it was, um, it was called wake up San Francisco from based on mm. the, the full house TV show that was, <laughs> awesome. that was their like talk show. And it was, um, uh, Jennifer and Jesse and Michelle from Mika Miko and then Bethany mm. from best coast. I think before best coast was a band <laughs> and then, and me, I think I was on guitar. I think we like wrote like <laughs> five songs and all dressed up. And I think Je- Jesse who played bass and Mikimiko and then guitar and bass and bleached. Um, she, she played on roller skates on the show and then we all had different, <laughs> oh, we all had so different cool. outfits on. Um, yeah, that was, that was a super fun show. <laughs> Well, was, yeah i think there was like one i like it i don't think we ever yeah but again there was no recordings of it or anything but it was a super you know yeah. one-off thing and many other different mm-hmm. types of those things um so yeah tell me about this about this uh this new release for a uh, pocket full of crumbs how'd you guys make it and how did how's how did it all come about honestly i think we just had like after the first album that we recorded we just already were playing like m- well, I had songs like kind of like on the back burner and we just kind of were like dabbling with it, like kind of messing around and then start playing them at shows. And then I think we all just agreed and just like we're saying like maybe we can use these songs for like the new album. I mean, we we're already playing like 10, maybe more new songs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We had like yeah, so many. While. Yeah. And then just kind of started recording it. And it was nice because like with this process, like we had no like date like release date yet so we really took our time and like actually like trying different recordings trying different ways like just hanging out and like it didn't feel rushed so it was like super nice yeah but yeah there's just a lot of songs are super new a lot of songs are kind of like i've kind of like started writing like before the first album mm-hmm. it was just kind of like yeah. a mix yeah. yeah some of the songs like we never played live 
Mm-hmm. And we kind of wrote when we were there. Like, yeah. we had the basis, but we were just like, okay. I think, like, the single, too, we'd only play yeah. once. We only played we it like once, yeah. <laughs> and then now it's, like, one of our more well-known songs, which is really funny. Because Mark was like, I don't want to play it live. I don't want to play it live. <laughs> it's usually me just being like, we're never doing that one again. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm glad we we kept some of them, but it yeah. is interesting yeah. to like hear them. And then like at our release show the other night, people were like, "Play Ice Water and play this one," and we're like, "I don't remember." <laughs> <laughs> they know the names. What what's what is that song? Yeah, I've definitely had yeah. that where people say like, "Oh, I like this song," and I go, like, "I don't know what song that is. I don't know the, the name." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It got named right before the record came out. Like I don't even know what that is. Or yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. The other side of that too was on the spot too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You have to go through your catalog in your head real quick. You're like, I think mm-hmm. that was this one, and then they'll tell you usually. You know, it's a no. It's a no. <laughs> yeah. Um. And the other, the yeah, the funny thing too of of you know writing the song and then just, and then recording it versus playing it live is sometimes you'll go back. I don't know if this, if the, if it's still too new, but if you've had that experience, you know, you go back to play it and then you go, or you play it so many times after it's recorded and then you listen, you listen to the record. You're like, Oh, it's so slow and so stiff. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That's, Oh yeah. I, I don't know if, it, if you've had enough time for that to happen, but that's definitely the that's first album. album. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's mm-hmm. like, I definitely like to speed everything up. Yeah. <laughs> but it's funny too. Cause like, even with that first album, I feel like we've kind of just been playing them so much that we kind of like have different iterations or we've had different iterations mm-hmm. of it. And now it's like, I don't know. Sometimes I think like, damn, maybe like we could have just put that newer version out. Mm-hmm. Oh, right. Yeah. We, yeah. Yeah, we did that for the we we did a record that was kind of like a studio record, and um and then we went to tour and we had to figure out how to play those songs live. So it's almost like we rewrote the songs like in, as a live mm-hmm. thing, like a, an interpretation. It was like we were covering the record in a way, and then um and it definitely felt like a whole different song by the end of that tour. It was like oh mm-hmm. this is a wholly different record, and then we 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 actually came up to San Francisco and uh, worked with this organization called the thing that made like these art objects. And, oh, um, uh-huh. and we recorded live in their like office space or kind of they had, like a little performance space there. I mean, for like 50 mm-hmm. people and we recorded live to four track, like the, the tour mm-hmm. versions of these songs. And we oh, cool. did like a, and we did quick dupes. I don't think we just made like 50 copies or something for everyone that was <laughs> in attendance got a version of it. So it's oh. called like reimagined an object. Was, an object was the name of the record. And we kind of reimagined it in this weird one-off sort of way. But that's sick. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was, <laughs> like, I think it came out cool. It's one that, yeah, it's like by the end, you know, after you play a song a bunch of times, it definitely, I think it's that's so true. Like it just sounds, it just sounds so different. I've had people, you know, show me the song, like how, you know, you're playing it wrong live every night. I'm like, how can I play it wrong? I can't be playing it wrong. It's, it's, my, it's my song I wrote. They're like, well, on the record, you do it like this. I'm like, oh, well, that guy was stupid. The guy that wrote, the guy that played that. He didn't know what he was doing. He hadn't played it 300 <laughs> times. Um, that's yeah, that's it's hilarious. But I always, I think one thing that always happened to us was it was like the song that we couldn't finish for the one record would usually become the single on the next record. Mm. I don't know if this has happened between your releases where it was like the thing that was like that song that was that ended up kind of being the standout song of that record actually could have gone on the one before, but it just wasn't quite finished. If that makes sense, like it was a song we just kind of left over from a record, like oh we'll finish yeah. it later, and then we'll and it usually has more time to sit. I just think that's just speaks to like the sitting on songs longer than it, but it's hard it's yeah. hard to do because you can't do that for every song. You can't just wait on yeah. one song. We yeah. have like a lot of songs that are not on this album that we also have been playing for a while now, mm. and um, I think yeah we're like already talking about wanting to record those ones um mm-hmm. i think there was one part part where we we're like oh i guess we could keep recording and just add these to the album mm-hmm. and then we were like no no let's just test that era that's yeah. just, let's <laughs> complete that era yeah and then close the book maybe it's a, the next, a tour yeah. ep or something or you could do some b-sides or singles or something yeah mm-hmm. how, how is how have you found it like releasing a, like a record and the sort of streaming world of stuff like i i, I guess i say this as as a Mm-hmm. As, as an old man in my forties and like trying to wrap my head around what does streaming mean for bands now? 
How 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 have you found that versus like just I releasing like singles or like what is what makes sense to you? It's definitely interesting because it's all that I've kind of known for a while. Like yeah, um, definitely like when I first started playing music, it was just like Bandcamp was the most successful. It was just like okay, I'll put it on Bandcamp, and people mm-hmm. paid a lot of attention to Bandcamp back in the day more than like now. It's like where's your Spotify link, you know, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, but it's like such a crazy thing that I feel like we've experienced. We're we're trying to like learn more because we're kind of terrible at promoting ourselves. We just like <laughs> we like hanging out. We like playing music yeah. and definitely releasing through a label has been super helpful because they will do a lot of that work for you. Mm-hmm. And the thing about releasing and streaming is like you have to keep promoting yourself. It's not just like in stores as much. So it's just like oh, I have to keep talking about this thing over and over and over again rather than like just being able to be like it's out in the world it's just like please listen yeah <laughs> just like come yeah, on like, you know so share sends yeah. post like i know i was like texting people i have not talked to in a while i was like new album like, <laughs> by the way it would help to get our numbers up if you go ahead and yeah. post this Oh my, I've had a lot of the times like uh, booking now like we were trying to book this tour the east coast and we have like some connections out there, but like people are like, "Well, how many followers do you have?" Mm. Like, you know, Ugh. you guys don't have a huge following, and kind of paying attention more to that stuff. And so that's different. If you're gonna bring the crowd or not? Yeah, yeah. whether it being like, you know, based on just the music kind of thing. It's kind of like, oh, you know, this person. If you know them, if they're vouching for you, I guess that's mm. like. I guess we could maybe trust you to play and you bring people. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. What's it's, your monthly listeners? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How are monthly listeners? Yeah. It's so it's so hard because it's so arbitrary too. Like you guys could be huge in one city and you know what I mean? You could have like thirty thousand mm-hmm. plays in yeah. like Mexico City or something and like, well, mm-hmm. okay, then, all right, I guess you have enough to play to Baltimore. It's like what does that have to do with Baltimore? You know, <laughs> yeah. I don't, you know, I don't know if you can see those reports. I've seen you know, I've seen these for us and it's just like yeah. it doesn't make any sense. You know, it's like I've always hated that kind of feeling of like, well, if you look at the if you really dig into the numbers, like, oh, the numbers say L.A., New York, London, <laughs> Chicago. Yeah. I mean, it's just like, it's like, just go by, it's it's exactly correlated to population of a city. It's like, mm-hmm. wow, we have more, yeah. you mean we have more listeners in a bigger city than we do in a smaller city? <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. wild. Yeah. What kind of science yeah. is this? Like, Sci- yeah. <laughs> yeah, like then we met, we played with um, – Catalyst, and they're from a small town in Rhode Island, and they were like, "Oh my God, everyone in our town listens to you guys," <laughs> and we were like, "Oh, what? <laughs> there we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's awesome. play a show. So Let's go." Them. Yeah, it was so like random to us, but yeah. cool to hear. But yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, yeah. The last No Age run we did, we played a, a, a we did like started in Chicago and kind of went to um, New York and into Canada, and you know it was like two weeks in sort of the northeast, and uh, and there was like three shows, three different shows where people from South America came to shows, and we're like, we came here just for you. And we're like, what do you mean? Mm. That doesn't make any sense. Whoa. They're like, you, you know, I'm from, I'm from Chile, and I want you're my favorite band. And we're like. Why the why the fuck did you fly to Toronto? Like, please, so, were you here for something else? Do you have relatives? And there, there was, but it was also like, you know, there was like maybe twenty people. Like the show was really unattended. Like it was not many people that came to the show. And like, but somebody flew yeah. from South America for the show, and it was just like, this doesn't make any sense. Like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with any of this information. Like, obviously, <laughs> we should go to South America. I guess is what this says. But- <laughs> But they've already seen us. This one person already saw us. Is there more people yeah. like you? I wanted. I was. I was kind of grilling them at the merch table. I was like, "Hold on." And after the third time, and after the second time, I was like, "That's weird." And by the third time, I'm like, "I need to know more information." Like, how many? Yeah. How many other people are there of you? Like, it's a really expensive to go there. Can I? Can I trust this number? This freak. This freak yeah. coincidence to to spend thousands of dollars on plane tickets to try to get to your city? Is it yeah. worth it? I can't tell. That's, yeah. Oh man, um, it's <laughs> That's so it's funny. it just feels yeah I don't know if, but again I, then I try to think back to you know earlier days and I was like I don't know if it ever made any sense then I just don't think 
people care. There wasn't really a numbers game like this, like social media uh-huh. kind of stats. This feels so much more like baseball cards, the back of a baseball card or something like, Oh, what's your numbers? What's your number? And it's just like, I think yeah, back yeah. in the day, there was just yeah. a feeling of like, no one knows who anybody is. We're all obscure. So we might as well, you could just have <laughs> yeah. not you're naive and, and um, delusional. And like no one knows who I am. So I'm the best. You know, and for, you know, it's, <laughs> so you, if no one knows, you just make up. You just say, you're, "I'm the next big thing." Who cares? I can't. You know, you could just kind of, kind of front is the way it felt like in my mind, at least at the time. Because <laughs> yeah. I loved, I loved lots of bands that nobody had heard of. Like, so it didn't really. Mm-hmm. It seemed like the playing field was a little bit more equal. Like just going to shows at the Smell all the time, I would see bands yeah. come through and be like, "I've never heard of this band before, but they're amazing." And then, mm-hmm. you know, it'd be like a band like, like I don't know, like Lightning Bolt or something, and you'd be like. If it's, yeah. And it's packed. And the next, you know, the first time is only a few people. And the next time there's tons of people. So somehow it worked. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah, su- such is okay. such is life in, in the 2020s. <laughs> yeah. how, how have you found working with uh, Cherub Dreams? What's the relationship there with them as a label? And what do you, how has that worked? They're great. They're like so mm-hmm. amazing. Definitely would recommend to anybody because oh, like yeah, a lot sure. of DIY labels here have come and gone I feel like since I've lived here <clears throat> yeah. we've lived here for like seven out of eight years yeah. um, especially during the pandemic it's, it was just like okay well who's doing something now and Cherub started a couple of years ago but definitely has like been the forefront of a lot of like releases from people this year and last year and it's wow. been great because they also, like, support their bands in, like, booking shows and promoting just what they're doing mm-hmm. um, rather yeah. than just being like, bye, you know, we, <laughs> we did your release. Very involved, I yeah. feel like, yeah, in, in a community sense, yeah. too. Always going to, like, every show, too, like, showing, like, actual, like, physical support, just sweet. Yeah. yeah. It's really, really sweet. That's yeah. super cool. But I think we ran into JB. I met JB yeah. through Nash one time. Nash and Figure Eight. Um, uh, I was at Nash's house, and I think just just talking, and then they started mentioning about like Cherub Dream, and then yeah, just always saw them like at every like whatever event, hang out. Yeah, that was it. Just yeah, ends up making friends that way, like how I would make friends like any other way, you yeah. know. And like we were kind of like talking about our options because we did want to see this time like what it would be like going through a label. And how what that experience would be like. Um, so we kind of like yeah, there was a while where we're yeah. trying to figure out what do we want to do. And like Cherub Dream was really down and always showed support. And then we also are doing a tape re- limited tape release through Cell First, mm-hmm. um, which is LA. LA based, and we were able to collab. Mm-hmm. through that which is cool because we're doing um we we're still able to work with chair but then we also work with kyle from self first and that this was kind of like the yeah. yeah the the best of both worlds for us because um we really like respect kyle and think what they do is awesome and like um was interested in just putting out like a more of like a special edition release mm-hmm. that would ha- it's would ha- it's gonna have like a bonus track and different art and some other little mm-hmm. things and we were super into that because that's kind of how we are too like yeah. we love doing that kind archive. of stuff <laughs> archive stuff <laughs> yeah um and so it was cool that cherub was also down to do that and mm-hmm. uh, yeah i mean I think we were all stoked that that kind of worked out. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of funny because, like, before, I mean, like, we never really thought about, like, going through a label. We were just kind of just doing it. Yeah. And I don't know. I think it was one time while we were recording this new album, the conversation just got brought up. And I don't know. We were just like, we don't know how to go about this. Uh, yeah. Who how should do we, we email people? Yeah. <laughs> we're like, maybe we should. This might help. Because, like. Yeah. We were all sitting around, like, a like, simple pleasure. <laughs> one night and we're at which is this cafe here and we're just like okay so how do we word this to kyle who like we met before and we're like 
they're not gonna accept us. Or whatever. <laughs> they don't remember us. They're, they're yeah. back like five seconds later. Like, oh, I totally remember you. Yeah. Down. And we're like, oh, so I don't easy. know why this seemed like such a big Sitting deal. Sitting there sweating for like twenty <laughs> minutes. Oh my so god. Yeah. And they're like, I'm going on all these tours around everywhere, but I'll do it. Yeah. yeah. So That's awesome. It, it was. A, it's been great. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's so definitely well. a new and like really sick experience. Because, again, like, the first time around, we did everything, like, ourselves. So, Sienna and Liv are super handsome. <laughs> they're, like, they're just, like, the managers. Like, like, they're so good at just, like, getting stuff done. And I'm like, ah. Oh. <laughs> well, that's, yeah, I mean, that's such a big thing, right? Like, being in a, in a band. I think in any band or any creative project, but specifically kind of like a, you know, a DIY band, you really have to wear multiple hats. I mean, that kind of feeds into sort of the hyphenate idea. But, like, what are the, what are some of the roles for the people who, who, have not done this and you think, Oh, you just, you just play, you just play music all day long. Like what are some of the things that, that, that go into that you, you have to do yourself or what are some of the different jobs you wear, your hats you wear? Something as, something as simple as like finding like a good website to order like a set, to, yeah. like, you know, going to like making runs to FedEx. So like print out like, you know, nice J cards. I don't know. Yeah. T-shirts, yeah, t-shirts, finding someone if we're not Street designing printing. ourselves. Yeah. And then we have like our friend in the East Bay burn our screens. We have to go burn the screens, pick up the screens, Do get the, the ink, and screen then print it ourselves. We didn't. We also like we're better now, but yeah. like we, we see a lot of messages that we wouldn't respond to because we're like it was like <sighs> in the request. And then it's like, oh, someone else read it. Oh, sorry, we need to get back to you. Oh, shit, it's been a month. Like, whatever. I'm the worst with that, with the responding. <laughs> Dude, that's why I gave, like, I had that pocket full of crumbs Instagram for, like, forever. And then I just started sharing access. I gave it to both of them because I'm like, I can't, like, I'm, I'm so bad at multitasking. <laughs> like, I'm, I just need someone else yeah. to also, like, have eyes on that. Yeah. So, yeah, just, like, yeah, messaging people. Our first, like, album barely had any tapes made for it. Oh, yeah. Because we, for our release show, <laughs> for our release show for that was also a house show. And I, like, ripped them all. I didn't have a duplicator at the time, but I was like, oh, I don't know what happened, but somehow got them duped at someone's house and then i think i did some too at my house it was like it took one, like one yeah yeah it took like because like my duplicator is just like it doesn't go fast it goes like real time so it was recording the master and the whatever copy in real time yeah. it took me like 30 minutes and just for like one some paper like threshold sleeve last minute and then we had like some jewel case things with like just our face on it and like <laughs> oh. and, and then i also burned a cd with like the digital like the cassette rip the cassette rip on my computer so you can't skip the songs on the cd <laughs> it's you could file. it's just one file on the cd we just sold that to that we're oh like two God. bucks hey <laughs> so it was we just were, a mess yeah. so we definitely like got a lot a lot more like um, skilled yeah. at those things and we screen print everything in my garage so yeah. it's like a super involved at this house yeah there's just a lot of like tiny steps like in detail that yeah. you do have to like take into accounting like finances true <laughs> oh my god I'm like, okay, getting, how much money did we make from yeah. all these shows and uh, how much can we spend on paying people budgeting yeah. and for buying stuff we've like it's kind of been really cool because we've been commissioning people for art this time too, yeah, this which time. is a little bit different than usual mm -hmm. and like we had a friend so we do the single art so awesome we had a really cool comic artist in new york um juliet colette and it's really sick making connections that way merch. too yeah. yeah they did our merch design and yeah we've just kind of like We've been. It, I feel like this has been just overall very collaborative. Mm -hmm. with like lots of people. It's mm -hmm. been really cool. Yeah. And yeah, like it's cool because it feels like it has brought us closer with a lot of people. And mm -hmm. like sure. people have just been really stoked about the album and have been like it's been on their radar because I feel like a little mm -hmm. bit of people over here, a little bit of people over here, like all have been kind of part of this process. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. I've never like actually had this many reviews for like an album. <laughs> Dude, I don't know yeah. if it, who it was, maybe it was part of Cherry of Dreams crew, but it, all of a sudden it was like one in, in Mexico, one over here, yeah. like one in Tucson. 
Yeah. And I'm like, what? And they all have really sweet things to say that I feel like are actually true, um, yeah. which has been great. But yeah, it's just interesting seeing like how much it's spread. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Well, it's a good record. I mean, good songs. You know, that's it. That's it. That's how it works, right? I mean, you'd hope. That's, you'd hope you write good music and people notice. But I think it, is, it always helps to have you know the the cheerleaders and people amplifying you know the signal that's coming out. I definitely, I definitely remember in the early days of No Age stuff. It was just like people would start coming to shows. And I'm like, like what happened? Like who who are they here to see? And I did. I couldn't. Yeah, like because in my mind, I was like this isn't any different than anything else I've ever done, but it's some, sometimes, you know, the timing or it's just something, something else. Again, I, I, I still find it hard to, to take any credit for it. Cause you're just like, I don't think this is me. I don't, cause I've been doing this for a long time and I'm still just th- as weird as I've ever been. Mm-hmm. But for, for some reason now this, this, um, this kind of weird people like, and eventually they won't. And that's fine. You know, it'll go away, but it's yeah. fun it was for that moment of like, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll accept it for now. But I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna get. I'm not gonna get too comfortable with this. I think it's just my own sort of. <laughs> just try to try to how to make sense of it all. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah. it's it's uh, it's interesting. You all three of you for, are for originally from Southern California, and then find yourself in, in San Francisco. What what is it like living in San Francisco? I mean, I my for myself growing up in Southern California, any opportunity to go up there, it always just felt like this is so cool. It's not hot. You can wear sweaters like all year round. I, everybody just yeah. seems so cool. You can ride your bike. I don't know. Like this is just, yeah. there was definitely like, it had this kind of magical, like and it really had that Disneyland almost like effect on me. Like once you cross over the bridge, you're like, yeah. this is cool. Yep. I'm, in, I'm somewhere I'm in. else. Yeah. I want to, I want to buy some comfortable, like vintage running shoes or something. I need something. <laughs> I need something cool so here, <laughs> but, um, yeah. How, how is it? Li- yeah. But all this, but again, like everywhere, you know, everyone hears st- stories about how terrible Los Angeles is. You know, I think the rap that, you know, the larger stereotype of San Francisco now is a, it's this tech bro sort of wasteland. Like, yeah. what is it? What's the, what's the reality that you find? How, how, how would you describe what your day to days are like actually, you know, being living in the city? I first. <laughs> I'm assuming none of you work for Facebook or, or for large tech companies. No, no, no. Okay. All right. So I, I should, I should just preface it with that. Like, wait a second. Maybe your parents are all, um, you know, work for Microsoft. I don't know. No, okay. No, no, okay. No, no, no. okay. Just checking. Okay. No. <laughs> um, I just feel like the techie presence is strong, but I feel like us as musicians and creatives, I feel lucky that I've found my people and my community and we've made space for ourselves and find space for ourselves here. Um, I obviously feel like during COVID, so many things have shut down and DIY and all ages spaces are very hard to come by here. Mm -hmm. Um, There's so many vacant buildings buildings and like things that are just completely abandoned, but it's all just techie world so it's just like not very accessible to us um and I mean I love living here and I'm my love for living here has always stayed and similar to what you said it still has that kind of fantasy feeling for me um because it's just so beautiful and there is a lot of cool stuff happening and I do feel like in the world after COVID there has been lots of growth of you know youth growth of people doing lots of creative underground things and all different types of art community things whether it be music or other avenues but like um I don't know I feel like we just I feel very like we separate ourselves from the techie world as much as we can I don't know that's it's still very there, and yeah. it sucks. But <laughs> I feel like um, I don't know. I, it's definitely not the easiest living here, but I feel like it's not the easiest living in any city, major city. Um, and I feel like a huge thing. It's part of like the San Francisco scene that's special is like the intergenerational aspects of it, and like some of my band members are like in their 40s or, like, you know, and we're friends with a lot of people that 
have been here since the 80s or 90s and like are still here and I feel mm -hmm. like it's really sick having that like <laughs> knowledge of how things were in the past like San Francisco was this like fucking crazy place especially in the 90s and early aughts before the, the boom but they're like oh like there was like everything you could think of existed here <laughs> um especially just like the Mission District and the history where we spend a lot of time playing shows. Um, but I think, you know, we shift with the ways the world are, and it's... I definitely wouldn't want to live anywhere else. Especially, like, being from L.A., I'm like, everyone's like, well, why wouldn't you move back there, you know? Like, <laughs> everybody's moving to L.A., like, that's where you're going to make it as a musician. I'm just <laughs> like, well, it's not really about making it for me, which I find is, like, a huge sentiment of people that create stuff in the Bay Area. It's, like, about like collaborating and kind of making it work and creating this tighter knit community mm -hmm. for like when you do like tour leave town like you're like the hometown hero or whatever but like <laughs> it's just like a much tighter knit like uh thing in terms of what we're trying to do and i feel like yeah. we do a lot of like generator shows and stuff that do exist like in, in a lot of other cities but it's like so important here to the way that, like, especially younger people are able to have space and not go to bars because bars are, like, kind of the only places people play music here. Yeah. And so it's like, okay, well, we have our spots that aren't burned out and, like, there's specifically, like, this burned down uh, gas station that we'll have, like, shows at. We've had, like, hot dog eating contests mm -hmm. at. We've <laughs> had, like, all these really weird things and there's definitely not a lack of spirit here it's more like you have to work a lot harder yeah. to like make the things happen so yeah. it's like really satisfying when those things do happen and you're like well people like are all fucking with this it's not like that's not disappeared from the city because a lot of people are like everyone's moved away like San Francisco's dead you know and we hear that from like a lot of like friends of older people and <laughs> yeah, I'm just like it's not dead like people are just like in hiding I'm, almost yeah, yeah. you're not you're just, you gotta be tapped in yeah it. you gotta like d definitely just like show up and that's the most important part too to yeah. add on to that like especially like with what like Liv and Lucky and Sienna does with uh with like outhouses just like creating those spaces like hot dog eating contest you know what i mean like you're like those generator shows like they're creating like spaces and they're not the only ones too but like a big part of it is like them like without house just creating spaces for like people to feel comfortable to show up to be tapped into the community and like do something you know debut shows you know mm -hmm. i don't know just be able to like hang out and like feel like a part of it which is yeah. i think really important too you know mm -hmm. yeah. just yeah, supporting like it's, it's yeah. funny because some of the debut show ones like they've actually continued their bands after that. And they're like, I've never been in a band before. And like, <laughs> I've just been in my band to do this thing. And now like they're playing a bunch of shows yeah. and like our friends in spa, like, they're like we've been waiting to have our first show mm -hmm. forever. But like, yeah. we haven't had space to play. And now they're like playing so much. They play all yeah, the time. Yeah. So. I see them on flyers. All the time. <laughs> it's nice to see that. Yeah. Just people finally just coming out and doing more. Cause there are like a ton of people that just want to express their stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. express their art yeah i mean that's it's so cool i mean really that's sort of you know those those foundational elements of sort of supporting or building a community or building a scene and that's when that way of sort of just holding a space for people who maybe were otherwise not heard you know and that kind of feeling mm -hmm. like this is yeah this is that opportunity this is that this is what these spaces are made for and i think it's something that almost it subverts this the the typical capitalist sort of idea of like, well, we're just here to make as much money as possible. If we don't, you know, sell out or make, sell, yeah. out, sell, you know, make thousands of dollars from the bar every night, then this thing can't afford to exist. But there's something about, you know, kind of living on the fringes a little bit or just having other goals in mind other than yeah. alcohol Not sales. Money. And a lot of things that you do yeah. is like self-funded. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's like, of it is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're like, oh, we don't make. Because I feel like a lot of time I'm booking shows for like a lot of people, and I wish I could help out everybody. But like, I'm like last weekend I did three shows for someone else, and the other weekend was like two more shows, and I'm just like, I'm not taking any money from this. I just like I'm doing it because I want to see it happen, and that's yeah. like, you know, a lot of our friends and 
um, and our specific like friend group is super inspiring and we all inspire each other I think and if yeah. I didn't have that if I was here like I'd definitely be like what is San Francisco like this place is so weird you know <laughs> yeah but it has a lot of that magical feeling to like bands that have toured up here and like stayed at our house and stuff now they're all moving up here very yeah. soon most of people come <laughs> yeah. there they, they tour and we like show them how We're fun like, it is. Come on, like, have a good time. And they're like, oh my god, I don't want to move. I'm definitely moving. Yeah, yeah. And that'll mean more bands and more like new things. Every time someone moves in, it's such a small city that it's like, okay, now there's ten more bands. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm excited for that for sure. That's yeah. awesome. That's like that, yeah, the kind of law of just of, of attraction. Like good energy attracts other good energy mm-hmm. and more yeah. people. Yeah. I definitely remember, yeah, there was that time in the early aughts where it just felt like, you know, like everyone's like, oh, why do you live in LA? LA's terrible. LA's horrible. And it's just like, it's like, okay, that's, that's fine. You can keep thinking that like somehow, like, you know, it's like, it just makes, because back then there was a feeling of like LA was cheap to live in, you know, and there yeah. were so many places and you could really get it. You know, we had a, a one bedroom guest house in Hollywood and there was like four of us mm. living in it. And we, you know, so mm. it was five, it was $500 a month. If every kicked, everybody kicked in 125 bucks, you know, we had, we could yeah, pay rent wow. and it made it easy. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, it, it, yeah. These, as time goes on, these stories become more and more the, like, it cost a nickel for, for a, <laughs> for a sandwich like i realize it starts to it starts it, it, it'll happen to you too i swear to god don't don't yeah. don't sleep on it it, it, it just happens but it's, you do nothing it just you do nothing and you exist you live for for 40 years and suddenly you sound like an old person but um but it's great it was that feeling I was just, but then as people would move to la and it was like see isn't this fun and then i don't know yeah. at some point maybe it wasn't fun anymore i don't know <laughs> and, it got, and it got expensive but i think that's just the nature of, of how it goes i think everyone's got to kind of find their find their place and find the right thing yeah, that works sure. oh, yeah. you know i mean and every time has its, has its place and every place has a mm-hmm. time mm-hmm. for sure well, that's awesome. Well, I'm so glad. I'm so glad you guys take the time to uh, to to chat and talk about the record, talk about San Francisco. I'm I am so stoked um, that things are going well for you guys, and I want to help you know amplify the message. Let everybody know they should listen to uh, the, the new album. It is the, there's a cricket in my pocket. No, there is. There, <laughs> my hands, I hold the lucky cricket. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I, I was trying to find it really quick with my eyes. I was like, in my hands, I hold a lucky cricket. Okay, sorry. I got <laughs> pockets and crickets confused. So I apologize. We have like a long band name, yeah. long yes. album name. Everything's a freaking statement. So annoying. <laughs> <It's, laughs> well, well, it's better than if you just shortened it to I M H I H A L K. Oh no, I the one it up. Song we right have, yeah, the you one have one of those. Okay, yeah. Album. It's like W Y. A-A-A-A-what-something. I don't know. Yeah. It's better. It, just it, write it, it out. It. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, well, it, it's awesome. Thanks I really, I really appreciate yeah. you. Yeah. Take, appreciate you taking the time. Where, where can people find out more? Where do you want people, where do you want to direct people to, um, who are interested, who want more information, want to buy the record, want to support you? Follow the five, band camp. Band camp, you can buy the yeah. cassette from, which that, that'll be available officially like end of August. And cool. August 10th on yeah. Self Verse ban- mm-hmm. website, website will have the limited edition cassette. So yeah. if you're looking for physicals, they're going to be published soon. Yeah. Cool. Yes. We'll, we'll be like, hey, world, it's out. <laughs> Instagram. <laughs> we'll, we'll try to make an Instagram post. Yeah, we'll try to make one. <laughs> Follow us on Instagram. We try our best. We'll be, we're going I on can- tour. The East Coast, so we'll we'll be posting a bunch about that. Yeah. There you go, and Great. you can listen to the album on Spotify and Bandcamp. All Great. Yeah. Well, there, there's some show notes down below for everybody listening to this. If you go down to the show notes, you can click on these links. Um, if you want to email me links email me the links and yeah, I'll put them all sure. in. And then in real time, everyone will look at them right now and they'll go, Oh, here are all the links. I will <laughs> click on these now. This will be, right, in, this will be in the future. Down yes. below. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you like, and subscribe. Hey guys. Uh, well, I appreciate it. Thanks for taking the time out of your busy schedules from all the many, many things you do and all the many bands and, uh, you know, all the great work that, uh, you all are doing. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so right. much. Nice to meet right. you. Hopefully nice yeah, very, you. very good to meet you too. Yeah. Hopefully I'll see you down in Los Angeles. We have each other's contact now. So please keep me in the loop too. Yeah. If, if you're going to be down yeah. here, I would love to come out if I can make it. Sweet. Awesome. 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 <laughs> all right. Thanks.
All Bye. right. Bye. Yes, there they are. Pocket full of crumbs. Mark, Liv, Sienna. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, it was a pleasure getting to talk to you and just hearing about all the fun stuff you're working on. And I, I it, you know, brought me back 20 years to just the kind of all hands on deck approach. Everybody out there putting shows on, playing shows, supporting your friends, making things happen. Um, really stoked on that band. So please get a chance, go find them on their Instagram, which is pocket.full.of.crumbs. And then you can also find them on Bandcamp, pocket full of crumbs, all one word, dot bandcamp.com. You can also find them on the Spotify, Apple Musics, you know, whatever else you like to do, wherever you listen to music. But uh, go follow them. And if you're on the East Coast uh, this week, you should try to go see them live. They'll be playing 8-9 uh, in Brooklyn, New York at the Living Gallery, 8-10 Providence, Rhode Island, 8-11 New Haven, Connecticut, house show, 8-12 Montreal, Canada, uh, La Saturnia. I couldn't say it the first time. I don't know why I thought I could see it. say it now. Uh, 8-13 Kingston, New York, house show, 8-14 Philadelphia, Abysnia, 8-15 Baltimore, The Compound, and then back 816 to Brooklyn, New York at Gold Sounds. You do not want to miss out. They are awesome. And, you know, support live music. Support artists. Go go to the show. Give them a $20 bill. And just see what happens. I bet good things will come to you in life. It's like a karma experiment. Go see live music. See a kid sweating and playing their ass off. And then just hand them $20 just because. And I'm sure good things will come back to you. <laughs> We should, I really, I really encouraging. I really want this to be a thing where you just randomly hand artists $20 bills and just makes their day and it will surely bring good luck and good fortune back to you. I'm sure the next thing you know, you're going to find a $50 bill on the ground and just all gets paid forward. You know, that's the world I choose to live in. <laughs> on, my, on the happy, optimistic days, right, man, you gotta, you gotta make your own luck and just, and just enjoy, enjoy what you have and support people who are out there trying to make the world a better place. So I appreciate you, Pocket Full of Crumbs. Keep on keeping on, and I will see everybody on Monday. Have a great weekend. Bye. What's your monthly listeners?